T1, but we also know that C4 can contribute and T2 can contribute, right? And at what disc level is C5 invertebrate at? At what disc level is C5 invertebrate at? So this is C5. What disc level is this? What C4? Remember, we know why that is. Do we know why? Where where does the C1 where's the C1 nerve root? What what joint is that? some bad looking discs here. Sorry, what? We're going left to right. Is that what you asked me to do? Oh, okay. You, you want to go the other way? No. <laughs> Maybe we'll have time to do both. <laughs> so get your vertebrae and their discs in. Get your spinal levels in. Some bad looking vertebrae and discs. Sorry. Okay, so what's the little phrase that might help you remember the areas of the brachial plexus? Teachers are going to be standing for, what does that stand for? Trunks. Trunks. So we know five and six come together to make what trunk? The superior trunk, correct? C7 stays by itself. He's special. He's middle trunk. C8, T1, they come together. Inferior. You could say something else for inferior. You could say lower trunk, or you could even say upper trunk for superior. You see that verbiage in the in anatomy books all the time. Okay, so there's our trunks. Drink D, what does that stand for? Divisions. How many divisions do we have? Six. Six. Okay, before I draw these, let's go back and remember what's, what is in each nerve root. They've come from somewhere, haven't they? They've come from the spinal cord, right? Mm -hmm. And before they get to the intervertebral foramen, we have anterior and posterior nerve rootlets, right? So each, each spinal level, so C5 has anterior and posterior divisions or root, uh, rootlets or branches. Each one has an anterior and posterior, don't they? And we're gonna follow them all the way out to the hand. Because if you don't remember that, these, this whole division mess won't make sense to you. This will help you Put that together. All right, so we've got the anterior and post anterior and posterior divisions of C5 and C6 in the upper trunk. 
We have the anterior and posterior divisions of C7 in the middle trunk. We have the anterior and posterior divisions of C, both C8 and T1 in the inferior or lower trunk. And then once we hit the division region, they're all gonna blow out of there, right? They're all gonna separate. So this is that highway mix, right? All right, so for convenience, let's do this. We're gonna say all three posterior divisions. So the posterior divisions of C5 and C6 that are in the superior trunk, they all go to the next part of the brachial plexus. They all go to the what cord? The coldest cord. The posterior cord. Now that's not how it gets its name, but that's a convenient way to remember it, isn't it? Okay, so that P is representing the posterior divisions of both C5 and C6. C7, both posterior divisions of C8 and T1. All the posterior divisions from C5 to T1 go to the posterior cord. In the end, this is gonna make more sense to you. All right, so what about the anterior divisions of C5 and C6? Well, they're gonna go straight ahead on their own and then continue on into another cord. And what cord would that be? Lateral. So the posterior uh, cord is all posterior divisions. The lateral cord is all anterior divisions of C5 and C6. We have an anterior division coming off the middle and it goes up to join the anterior division of C5 and C6. So we could add now the anterior division into that lateral cord is C5, 6, and 7. Are we okay? All right. So now we just have anterior divisions of C and T1. They are behaving a lot like they did at C5 and C6. They're going straight ahead to the third chord. What chord is that? Medial, AL. Medial chord. So the lateral cord, what you could say is a pure anterior division cord. The posterior cord is a pure posterior division cord. And then um, medial cord is a pure anterior division cord. That makes sense to everybody? Sure, you know I should have used a different color. I mean, erase the A's because they're black and let's make them red. Now you can see them better. That help? So we know the anterior divisions coming from C5 and C6 go into the lateral cord. And we know the anterior division in C7 also goes to the lateral cord. So the lateral cord is a pure anterior division cord. That's what I meant by that. That help? And the anterior division of C8 and T1, they continue to the medial cord. So the medial cord is a pure anterior. But well, we know the posterior divisions of all three trunks, all, the, all five roots come together to the posterior cord, pure posterior division. How's that? All right. How 
How many terminal branches do we have? Five. There's two really easy ones. So we only have one coming off the lateral cord. What's that one? That's horrible, sorry. Musculocutaneous, musculocutaneous. Now on the, the quiz Friday, I'm not gonna ask you to know spinal levels except for um, what the brachial plexus is. So you don't have to memorize for this quiz, say for example, what's, what are the spinal levels for the musculocutaneous nerve? We'll do that later, okay? Basically, I just want you to get, get down for this quiz, roots, trunks, divisions, cords, terminal branches, and then what divisions come from what trunks and what divisions go to what cords. That will be on the quiz. So you gotta, you gotta kinda know this mix here. You gotta know that mix. I'll check on that, but I do not believe so. <clears throat> not on the first quiz. You will on the second quiz. And then you'll have to know everything for the special brachial plexus quiz in week seven. So what I'm trying to do is <clears throat> show you the big picture, but let's test you on in, in chunks. And we'll build on it. It's that way you won't feel so overwhelmed. Okay. And then if we go to, so we could say that the musculocutaneous nerve is a pure anterior division terminal branch. And now this is where it's going to make sense to you. I know we haven't talked about the arm yet, but what muscle group is this in the anterior arm, the brachium? What muscle group? The biceps. And all the muscles of the biceps area are innervated by what nerve? Musculocutaneous, which is an anterior division, terminal branch, and what compartment is this? Anterior compartment of the arm. Get it? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Let's do some more of that. <clears throat> so what terminal branch would this be down here that's coming off the medial cord? our nerve. It's also a pure anterior division terminal branch, isn't it? Inconsistently, C7 goes there, right? So he's kind of dirty once in a while, but he's <laughs> basically he's pure, right? So ulnar nerve, where does the ulnar nerve go? Anatomical position, where does ulnar nerve go? It runs underneath the medial epicondyle, right? So it doesn't do anything in the in the brachium, whether it be anterior or posterior. It's going somewhere else, isn't it? <clears throat> so it's going to innervate a couple muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm, and it's going to innervate two thirds of the muscles in the palm, which is what anterior. Another one, right? Anterior. <clears throat> okay. Then we have this median nerve, right? The median nerve. Well, let's do radial nerve. We'll do radial. Let me do radial. So off the posterior cord, we have the axillary. And the radial. <clears throat> radial nerve, what does that innervate? Triceps, what compartment of the arm is that? Posterior. Posterior. And what are the divisions in the radial nerve? Posterior. They're all posterior, aren't they? Posterior cord. Radial nerve also does this group of muscles. What are these? Extensors, Extensors right? And what compartment is that? Posterior. The posterior compartment of the forearm. Awesome, right? <laughs> Axillary is a He's a bit of a mix because he's going to do lateral, anterior, and posterior, but because it's posterior, posterior divisions, right? Okay. 
Let's go back to red now. We have these two roots, this root from the lateral cord and this root from the medial cord make the median an nerve. So those are all anterior divisions, aren't they? <clears throat> Where does the median nerve go? What's it gonna, what's it gonna innervate? Most of the anterior forearm muscles, I mean, ulnar does a few, but median does most, and then it also does the muscles of the hand. Thumb side, the nerve side, recurrent median nerve on the the nerve side. So again, anterior terminal branch, anterior divisions in that terminal branch, anterior compartment. Hopefully now that whole idea of anterior and posterior divisions makes sense to you. Should we draw in the secondary branches for fun? <clears throat> How many secondary branches in the roots? Just the roots. Roots and trunks, seven, yes. But how about just the roots? Five, here's the easy ones. Here's the easy ones. So we have two off of C5 and one off of T1. So we have dorsal, scapular, phrenic, and first thoracic. Or you could say first intercostal, right? Dorsal scap, C5, phrenic, C5. Does C4 contribute? Yeah, it does, but we're gonna say C5. First thoracic or first intercostal, T1. The two that are tougher, they both come off of C5. One is C5, six, seven, and eight, and that's gonna be nerve two, Longus, coli, and scalenes. Remember the anterior and medial scalene sandwiches the brachial plexus. And then the next one, the last one in the roots would be C5, 6, and 7, and that's the. You might know? Long, long thoracic. And what does that go to? What muscle? Serratus anterior, right? Serratus anterior. All right, <clears throat> how many off the trunks? Two, both C5, C6. First one would be the suprascapular, going to infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and the other one is the nerve to the subclavius muscle. Although I did check in your textbook, uh, they did kind of change that. I'll have to look and see if they have it um, in more than one spot, but they call it the subclavian nerve. Have you seen that anywhere? We're going to say nerve to the subclavius because that's how I have it. But just be aware, uh, your textbook calls it the subclavian nerve. Do we have any secondary branches um, in the divisions? No, thank goodness. Do we have any on the lateral cord? Yeah. What's that one? Lateral pectoral. Lateral Do we have any on the posterior cord? Yeah. We have three. They are going proximal to distal, upper, middle, and lower what? Subscapular. And another name for the middle subscapular is thoracodorsal. Do we have any off the medial cord? Yeah. Three. What's the proximal one? Medial 
pectoral. And in letter that shows this kind of like this loop or ansa between the lateral pectoral and the medial pectoral, why would that be? Why would there be a connection? Because it's pec major, pec minor, they're both right there, right? So there's a connection between the two. What's the next one down from medial pectoral? Medial brachial cutaneous, which does cutaneous, remember? Medial arm. And then I'll abbreviate here. Medial ANT, ANTE brachial cutaneous, which means below the elbow, medial. And then that's your brachial plexus. Don't forget what vessel lies right here. Axillary artery. Remember the, here's my letter M, M for misal. See it? So there's the V, there's the artery, median nerve comes right down from it. If you can find that in wet lab, I'd say, I would suggest that's where you start, there, and then also the roots are easy to find. The rest of it, it can be difficult for sure. All right, ready to do, oh, any questions on this? Leave it up for two more minutes. You know, you've got it in video, you've got it. Yeah.